right, I'm Sofia Talvik. I came all the way from Sweden to play for you guys here in Waxahachie. That's close enough. In the music room, studio, and listening room. And I'm so happy to see all you here and all that is listening at home. And I'm going to start with a song called If I Had a Man. Sister, if I had a man Who wouldn't mind to let me down Who'd always treat me like a clown What would you say, oh sister If I loved this man Who'd never come to treat me right Who'd always put me through this fright Of losing him what would you do? What would you say? Wouldn't you tell me to get rid of him straight away? Would you sit back and watch him break my heart? Well, that's not what I do. Sister, if I took him back Time after time and on and on No matter how he did me wrong What would you say? What would you do? What would you say? Wouldn't you tell me To get rid of him straight away? Would you sit back and watch him break my it's not what I do, it's not what I say Honey, you shouldn't let him play with your heart this way Then why won't you listen when I tell you this? Oh, just hear me out, honey, be strong No one should hurt you like he does and you know it's wrong And it breaks my heart to watch him break your heart Sometimes it doesn't work out the way we planned Sometimes we fail Ooh, oh. And sometimes it doesn't work out at all Like we thought it would Sometimes we lose it all Sometimes we fall Sometimes we fall Sophia, welcome to In the Music Room. It is an absolute pleasure having you come so far away to be with us here tonight in Waxahachie, Texas. Thank you. Waxahachie, is that how you say it? That's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's well, how I say it. It's, it's a very hard name to pronounce. When you're not from here. <laughs> That's true. I've That's been true. struggling with Sophia all day, so don't I know. Don't yeah, worry. no doubt. I had to write your name at the top of the page so Randy didn't call you Sylvia. <laughs> That's all right, because you know... I've already warned her about it. <laughs> you know the Swedish queen is named Sylvia, right? Oh, I didn't. Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, cool. Queen Sophia is what we call you now. <laughs> and then there's Jonas, your wonderful husband, who came along with you. Yeah. Who I, I call... No, no, no. He is Keith Urban, Jr. Because he looks a lot like Keith. <laughs> so you've got Queenie and Keith. Huh? That's right. That's okay, right. I get it. I get it. I get it. And if I had a man, tell us about that song that you just did for us. Well, it's actually a pretty old song. It's um, a song that I wrote to a friend of mine a long time ago, and she was uh, she was dating this guy, and I thought that he was no good for her. So I told her, you know, you should break up with him, and she didn't want to listen to me, and she got a little angry, and. 
So I didn't know how to tell her, you know, and so I wrote her this song instead. There and, you go. Uh, and now she actually has a kid with another guy. Yeah. And they're super happy <laughs> together. So, I mean, I take all the credit for that, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> how long have you been writing and, and playing professionally? Well, I released my first album about 10 years ago, um, but I have been doing nothing about music for the last five years or so. Isn't that great? Yeah. And how long have you and Jonas been together? We had our 10th anniversary um, just the other day. Ten, well, yeah. But we've been together for 14 years. So he's definitely a supporter, no doubt, I can tell by He his. was at my yeah. very first show. It sounds like, a ma- <laughs> sounds like a matter of the heart to me, doesn't there, it? Yeah. There a there. matter of the heart. Tell yeah. us about that song. Well, uh, we were on this really long tour here in the States a couple of years ago. It started in 2011, and uh, we were on the road for a year and a half in this big old RV. And um, so a lot of the songs on my new album are inspired by that long tour. And so this is a song that I actually wrote when I was on the road. And um, we were just talking earlier here today about the rain last night. And when you live in an RV, you have a really, really thin roof. Mm -hmm. So when it rains, it gets really loud. So uh, I was in uh, Auburn, Alabama, and I woke up in the morning super early because the rain was just pounding on the roof of the RV. And um, so it it sort of planted this rhythm in me, like someone was tap dancing up on the roof. And um, (laughs) so uh, I just, uh, I brought the guitar to the front seat and I wrote this song and it's called A Matter of the Hearts. Is it because I can't have you? Because I let you go? I was the wiser of us two But I was a fool for you All the things I can tell you That you already know What do they matter now? And what do they Serve it cause I let you 
a good rainstorm huh (laughs) (laughs) so tell me what made you want to write your music or growing up you grew up in Sweden did you have a musical family well my grandmother was a a piano teacher actually Mm -hmm. so I started playing piano when I was pretty young and um, I played more classical piano for many years and then as a teenager, I sort of grew tired of the piano and the classical music. So I wanted to uh, play the guitar instead. So I got a guitar for my 18th birthday and I just started writing songs to teach myself how to play it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who were you listening to at the time that you first started writing? <laughs> it was sort of the Brit pop era. So I was listening in a, a lot to a British band called Suede and I was also listening some to the Cranberries and various like British artists mm-hmm. you now are living in Germany yeah in Berlin yeah so you're living in Berlin so you're you've, you've migrated down there and you said you told us earlier that the music scene down there is just much more vibrant it is uh, tell us about that well Germany is um, for starters a much bigger country than Sweden and uh, Sweden only has nine million people um, so uh, we do have some bigger cities but it's not a huge music scene for smaller bands or like medium sized bands and Germany I think it's uh, they are very curious about new music you don't have to be super famous to uh, get a good draw and um, to book good shows so we tour a lot in Germany but also some in France and Denmark and um, this summer we're going to go down to Switzerland and Austria so Great. Yeah. You've got a song called Give Me a Home. <laughs> yeah. And I'm wondering, does that have anything to do with any of this? <laughs> Not really, actually. <laughs> um, I have a friend who's a singer-songwriter, and she's from Boston. Uh, her name is Michelle Lewis, and um, she was uh, touring from Boston to L.A., I think. Um, she I, she relo- relocated to L.A., and... Um, so she posted this picture on Facebook of Buffalo, and she wrote, Give me a home where the buffalo uh, roam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I saw that, and I, j- I just thought it was sounded so beautiful. And I was writing this song, and it just fits so well to the song that I was writing. So I was like, hmm, I got to steal that phrase, you know? So after a while, I started thinking, and I was uh, asking myself, Shh. like, um, did she really come up with that? <laughs> Of course she didn't. I mean, you all know it's Home on the Range. Yeah. But uh, that song is not a well-known song in Europe. So (laughs) (laughs) I I had never heard about it before. So I decided to steal the phrase anyway. And um, it's now in my song. And I actually learned that this song is a state song for Kansas. So this could be the new state song for Kansas. There you go. There you go. Let's hear it. Where the buffalo 
quality to you that, oh, thank I, you that I appreciate a whole lot. Well, what are your impressions uh, your, of America right now as you're touring over here? Well, you know, I love America because I think it's so diverse. Since we're going all over the country, we've now been to 45 states. You get wow. to see a lot wow. of, of different places. Also, of course, I mean, Americans are famous for being very friendly and open, so that's also a huge bonus when you're touring here. Always meet a lot of nice people. And then there's Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not proud nah. <laughs> now. I have to, uh, today I got to go up on YouTube and listen to your song Lullaby. And I know that's the next song on the mm -hmm. set list. Not trying to cut the conversation short, but tell us about that song. I really uh, kind of was taken with that song a little bit listening to it today. Well, it's a, it's a very sad song. My mother passed away two years ago, so I wrote it oh, after she sorry. passed away. So it's a little bit about my dad's feelings and my feelings and sort of stuff that I interpreted, you know, into the song. And it didn't have a name for a long time. So I, when I would play live, I would ask the audience what they thought the song should be called. And I got a lot of different suggestions, and some people wanted to rewrite the song. And oh, <laughs> right. Sounds like a songwriter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and, um, and finally um, I uh, played a show up in Hamburg in Germany and this lady came up after the show and she had a name suggestion and she said she thought it should be called Lullaby. And I asked her why and she said, well, you know, it's like when you uh, go to sleep where you're like really sad and you just want to go to sleep to f forget everything and then you sort of hope that you don't want to, you know, that you won't wake up again. And it's, that is very sad. It's even more sad than the song, I think. <laughs> uh, but it, it's, it's still, I felt like a, a good name for the song. And so you saw the video, and that video is actually filmed here in Texas, down outside Houston, in Richmond, oh, Texas. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. cool. So um, um, we filmed it down there. We did a house concert at this um, this old farmhouse, and um, so we filmed the video. Art house concerts just the best. <laughs> yeah, they really are. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, I think Helen Mudd's favorite thing about playing too. We like mm -hmm. going into people's homes and playing. It. There's just a quality to it. Do do a lot about for us. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
<laughs> really pretty song. Thank you so much. You're lucky you can sing it. I wrote a song about my dad when he passed, and I still can't sing it. Mm-hmm. I just can't. We got her to sing it one time, and I can't. We recorded it, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Talking about albums, you said you have a new album. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that album. I, I know it's been nominated or uh, is charting, and has it been uh, the best album in the UK? And tell us all about yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and I've... she's going to do the title song at the end of the show. For oh, okay, cool. So. Yeah, so I released this album here in the States um, last year. A lot of the songs are inspired by that long tour that I did. And uh, yeah, it's, it has some really great reviews here. It's recently been released in the UK so it was just selected one of the five best Americana albums in the UK of this year by one of the big newspapers there and it's actually charting now as number 15 on folk radio here in the USA so Yay! yeah I'm, you know I feel pretty good about it <laughs> now let me ask you so that you can get a plug in here for our listening audience if they want to purchase your albums do you have a website or a place that they can go to do that I do they can go to my website it's Sophie sophiatalvik.com that's sophia with an f t a l v i k.com you can also just google swedish singer songwriter and i'm pretty sure you will find me but i'm also on, on itunes and amazon and we'll have a link on the bottom of the in the music room page yeah. for them too so yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure they can find me okay so i've yeah. got a i've got a question this, this is a kind of a clarifying question for me Uh-oh. because i <laughs> <laughs> Folk music to me, you know, I think of it in the terms of American folk, of, of yeah. the uh, of Woody Guthrie and the, the the pioneers of folk, and kind of where it's gone since then. But what is Swedish folk? And in other words, is, is it an extension of American folk music, or is it its own entity? No, it's very different from American folk music. But actually, you know, I can I can sing one Swedish folk song for you guys if you want to. Uh, actually, I'd love for you to. Yeah? We'll just work it in. Okay. Like, this is a great time. Yeah, all right. So, um, <laughs> this is a really old song. This song is from the end of the 18th, 1800s and uh, early 1900s. And this is a song that the Swedes would sing when they emigrated to America. And it's called? The Emigrant Song, Emigrant Visa. This song is uh, it's about leaving everything that you love behind for something new that you don't know. And even though this song is, you know, 100 years old or so, it's I think it's very accurate still today because so many people have to leave their homes for something new. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Farväl alla gåsar så rara Farväl allra käraste vän Nu kan det vara mycket svårt ändå När du och jag, min vän, ska skiljas åt Men det är min innerliga önskan Att vi två ska ses igen Nu kan det vara mycket svårt ändå När du och jag, min vän, ska skiljas åt Men det är min innerliga önskan Att vi två ska ses igen I'm packing for my journey, I am leaving And God knows when I will return Farewell all sweet lads, farewell my darling Farewell my most dearest man And it's so hard for us to say goodbye My darling Oh, I feel like I will die But deep in my heart I will keep hoping That we two shall meet again Beautiful! (laughs) You know what's interesting, I just made a note about this because it's a great title for a song too, but when you when you've uh, funny how that works. 
<laughs> when you uh, were singing that song, you had a different look on your face than you've done with any other song. And you have a smile like Bridget Bardot when you were singing that song. <laughs> I don't know if anybody noticed it but me, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it was really cool. And, boy, is that a good name for a song. Yeah. Smile like Bridget Bardot. I'm going to steal this <laughs> right from you. <usually. laughs> he must like you. You fixed to have a song written about you. <laughs> it's happened before. It has. It has. Our friends will tell you so. <laughs> so next time I'll come back and I'll hear the song. There yeah, you you'll hear the song. You'll know <laughs> that you were the muse. Where do you feel like you want to see your music go over the, the next, say, couple of years? What What's your goals? Well, hard to say because, you know, it's easy to say sort of, yeah, I want to become famous. I want to sell, you know, millions of albums. I want to play the big music halls and stuff like that. But really, I think all I want to do is just like be able to continue living off my music and just doing what I love and um, not have to worry so much. I mean, it would be great if I could get some more help maybe in the future, like with bookings and and stuff like PR and stuff like that, that I didn't have to do everything myself. Because mm -hmm. now uh, me and my husband, we are running our own little label and we're doing everything from booking shows to touring to uh, doing PR and uh, it's a lot recording. Of work, isn't and, it? Yeah, it's a lot of work. So I mean, yeah. if I would say I would change something, it would be that I would have some more time to uh, write new songs and just like produce more and not have to be by the computer <laughs> sending emails so much, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 What's your favorite part, though, of doing this? I think recording is my favorite part because when I play live and uh, when I write songs, you know, it's just me, basically. And uh, when I record on my albums, I, I have a backing band in Sweden and they record with me. And uh, it's like when you record a song, it's like you, it's so great to hear it evolve with the different music instruments. Mm -hmm. And um, so you at first you just have the guitar and my voice and then it sort of grows and it grows it becomes the production yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's uh it's like a little bit of a surprise every time and uh, i really like that but you know just you and a guitar it, it makes you so vulnerable i mean really when you think about it you know mm. because you have nobody to fall back on except but it also yourself. brings everybody else's defenses down to where they accept it more mm -hmm. so it's a it's yeah, a two-way street it's a good thing and, al and also i mean if i if i would make a mistake or if i decide in the last minute to do like an extra chorus or something i don't have to adjust to a band that has rehearsed yeah. the song so i also i can be a little bit more flexible um you know playing solo but yeah, it's great to have a band, too. I mean, it's a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah, oh, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It, it has its moments. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then trying to keep them together, not that's, so that's good. That's pretty impossible. <laughs> <laughs> not so good. <laughs> Seven yeah. Miles Wide, that's your next song. Tell us about that. Well, this song is actually a duet, um, but if you want to hear me sing this with a, a great singer from Sweden, it's on uh, one of my albums. This song is about staying together, and it's when you're together, I think... There's a good golden rule, uh, and that is to never go to sleep angry with each other. And this mm -hmm. song is sort of about that. All right, let's hear it. Rift in our bed is seven miles wide, though I see the slow. You are here right beside I'm trying to reach out But it's just in my mind My body's too tense And too stiff to unwind The rift in our bed is seven miles deep The edges are sharp And the walls are so steep And if I could throw myself out like a dove with the peace that I offer ever substitute love so hold on, hold on, hold on for the night for the day hold on, hold on for the night will not stay Punishing you is harder on me And it's double the torture that you don't even 
see that the rift in our bed is seven miles wide and I'm on the edge and have been for a while so hold on, hold on, hold on for the night, for the day to cry for but I'm crying inside as a rift moves you farther away from my side I want to reach out but I'm just so darn proud will you build me a bridge and I will come around so hold on hold on for the night for the day Jonas gets sideways with each other. Do you just sing that to him and it's done? <laughs> well, you know. Uh, <laughs> no, I just go to sleep. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, it's Say actually, you know, when uh, uh-huh. because we are touring together and um, we're living in this tiny little RV and uh, we're um, basically with each other 24-7. Yeah, that's hard. Uh, people will uh, sometimes ask, you know, how do you manage without killing each other? And, <laughs> and you know, I'm very lucky. We are best friends, and we always have a great, great time together. So, yeah, it's very rarely that we get angry with each other. Usually we don't. So, what makes a great song to you? For me, it's all about the melody and the lyrics. So, I mean, I like a lot of different kinds of music. It doesn't have to be like a singer-songwriter or folk music. I like rock music, as long as there are good lyrics and um, good melodies. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Do you find writing to be easy or is it come and go yes and no i mean i'm not one of those people who will say okay i'm now i'm going to sit down and write a new song and um or like five new songs for a new album it's for me it's always been more like it just 
comes to me whenever, and then I write a song. Usually it comes at bad timing when you're about to go to sleep or you're in the car and you don't have your guitar, guitar handy. And for uh, the next album, I'm probably actually going to try to uh, sit down and say, okay, I'm going to see what happens if I write a song because every Christmas I write a Christmas single that is also something that you know I sit down and write because it has to be released at a certain time and stuff like that and it's always worked out fine but with my other music it's never been like that so it's a little bit weird you know mm-hmm. yeah uh, tell us about the song yeah well um uh, this is also a song that I wrote when I was on that long tour and um, when I um, was uh, recording a little demo for um, the new album, Big Sky Country. I didn't know if I was going to include this song or not, but I w- it was in my songbook, so I was like, okay, I'm going to record it anyway, just as a demo. So my husband Jonas heard it and he was like, oh, that's my favorite song of all the songs, all the demos for the new album. So it's like, I guess it made the cut, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so here it is. Thinking Jonas liked the groove to that. That's what I'm mm-hmm. thinking. Yeah, thinking. yeah. on the, the album, album, it feels like a little like the doors because there's an organ on there, like <laughs> yeah. ringing out. I noticed that you play uh, the same kind of guitar I play. Oh, oh yeah. that, that pick year? guard is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. What year is that? Um, I'm not quite sure. I actually got this guitar just a few days ago. Did you? It's a because, pretty old Yamaha. Yeah, we were flying over from Berlin and we were flying to Miami. We came to the airport. I usually play a vintage guild. They said at the airport, they said, you can't bring the guitar on the plane unless you buy a seat for it. And oh, it's going to be $1,700. Oh. So I came 
to this tour and I didn't have a guitar with me. I had to buy a new one, like I had one day to buy one. And then, so I, I just picked one up at Guitar Center and then I was not super happy with it. So I've been looking now during this tour, I've been looking for a new guitar. So I just got this a few days ago, um, but it's um, 1960 something. Yeah, it's it's, it's solid wood, which yeah. is Yamaha went through a period there after about the mid 70s where they weren't making great guitars, but they up through then and now they're making them great again. Mm. The way they did. So, and what tuning are you using? Because I've noticed you're doing a lot. Well, of, this is just regular, but sometimes I, I I down tune the E string to a D. But, okay. Um, yeah. This just a. Uh, it's okay, regular you're just following tuning. That. It just, yeah. uh, well, sounds, okay. uh, just so different. you know, if you need a place for your guitar, if they won't let you take it back, you can keep it here. Yeah. Thank you. We'll keep it very safe. <laughs> and if you come back over and have that problem again, I'll just loan you a guitar. For well, she's trip. leaving out of Texas, so, you know, I was that's, just thinking she'll be coming back. That's right. That's yeah. right. Well, the good thing with the Guitar Center is that they actually have a 45 days return yeah. policy. Yeah, yeah. So, oh. yeah. You can't lose. <laughs> Basically, you could go here and just, like, if your tour is shorter than 45 days, you can buy a guitar and then return it at the end of Either the tour. Either that or make sure you've got a Guitar Center in the town 44 days from there. You know? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Tell us about cars. Cars is, uh, is one of my older songs. It's uh, from my very first album that I um, released in uh, 2005. It's a song about uh, people, I guess, but, you know, sometimes people can be like cars. You know, you you try to fix them, but it just won't work. I've got a neighbor that's yeah. an Edsel, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> And that's 
what we're doing. We're getting to know her. That's right. It is a pleasure. It really is. I know that you're quite the road warrior. Everybody has the mo- their most memorable moment when they've played someplace. What is yours and why? Oh, wow. Um, there are so many. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know, it's um, really hard to say. I mean, <clears throat> on the last tour that I did here in the States... We uh, played uh, actually a house concert too, and um, that was just such an amazing place. It's called Walker World uh, Organic Artist Retreat. It's in North Carolina, mm-hmm. uh, close to Wilmington. When you get there, this guy he um, he had this whole house by the river, and um, as he put it himself, one board led to another, and now it's just like a huge house, and it's made from like scrap wood, old like church windows, pianos, boats, you know, it's just a very special, special place. One of those places you you don't think they will exist. It's like a magical place. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a very special show for me, I think. So that whole place, it was just, uh, I felt like I was being, you know, transported back to the 1960s or something. And (laughs) it was very cool, yeah. People have had that experience coming in this room. Yeah, yeah. Just, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's uh, it's outside Wilmington. Um, it's in Castle Haynes, I think it's called. And uh, so it's called Walker World. His name is Alan Walker. He actually rents that place out on uh, Airbnb as well. So people go there to have weddings and stuff. And yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah, it's a good place. yeah. It's on the Cape Fear River. Yeah, it's on the Cape Fear River. Yeah. Very cool. And it's got a bunch of boats there, too, so we went out boating the day after. It's a lot of fun. Sounds like fun. Yeah. You have a song called Bonfire. Yeah. Tell us about that. I don't know what to say about that song. Sometimes, you know, the songs just come to you and... uh, and Just random, huh? Yeah, just random. (laughs) That's one of those songs, and uh, yeah. All right, let's hear it. My heart is bursting at the seams. It's too crowded with you there. Please leave or I will burst into flames tonight I will light up the town and the sky Just crept up and like a bonfire I'm burning for you in the night Like a bonfire My heart is bursting at the seams It's too full to keep you there And I have nowhere left to put that love To the flames and the heat As she smeared over my chapped dried lips I'm burning for you in the night Like a bonfire Like a bonfire with you there Please leave or I will burst into flames tonight I will light up the town and the sky Just cracked open like a bonfire I'm burning for you in the night Like a bonfire Like a bonfire having you and Jonas here. I know that getting into this business, you had to have mentors of type, so people that you look to to kind of give you that next little bit of help when you first started. My first album I released on this uh, little indie label in Sweden, and um, basically, you know, I was uh, I was hoping for so much more at the time. I was very impatient. I wanted <laughs> stuff to just happen very quickly. So um, I just looked at what they were doing and I I said to myself, you know, I can do this 
much better. <laughs> so uh, after that first album, uh, me and my husband, we started our own label and then we just sort of figured things out as we go along and, uh, you know, here we are now and we've had the label now for 10 years and released six albums and... Well, yeah. let me let me turn that one, that question around just a little. Then let's let's say that a young lady came up to you, or a young man, and said, "I want to do what you do." What advice would you give them? Don't wait for anyone else to recognize you or like you know find you, or because it's not going to happen. I think if you want to make it today, you have to be an entrepreneur as well as an artist. You have to. I agree with you. Yeah, you really have to sort of make things happen for yourself and. I could say it's sure it's easier now than it was before because you have opportunities to record at home quite cheap and you don't have to have a lot of money to uh, make an album. It's also the other way around, you know, you still have those major labels uh, that you can't really compete with. But I think just, uh, I would just say go for it and uh, just, you know, get out there, uh, start touring. Because I think you learn a lot from touring. Yeah, the dis distribution is what they have that that indies don't have as much of so yeah uh, but yeah i'm just tickled to death to have you here tonight and Aww. tell us about big sky country and take us out of the uh, yeah. show with that big sky country is um it's a song that i wrote at the end of that long tour that i did here and i had at the time been traveling through 37 states and i wanted to write a song about all the beauty that i had experienced along the way and um all the people i met and uh so this song is about two hours long. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was thinking, boy, that's a lot to get in the you know, three or four minute song. It's got, it's got 475 Buffalo references in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so it's, uh, it's also the name of my new album. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a song about, uh, about touring, but it's also a song about going home to, uh, to where you belong. And this album is available now. It's available at her website. And uh, you guys make sure you get it and go out and support this artist when you see her playing in your area. I've seen the Blue Ridge Mountains rise tall. I heard the San Francisco Sea Lions call. I left my heart in the dirty old bar In Laramie, Wyoming, I slept in my car And there were days when I thought this is it I couldn't go forward, yet I couldn't quit I wrote the song with my love behind the wheel But no matter how I sing it, it won't tell you how I Oil will be belong to the big 
<laughs> well, Sophia, just so you know, you and Jonas always have a home here Absolutely. at In the Music Room. I want to thank you again for spending your evening with us and entertaining our nice studio audience that yeah. we have this yeah. evening. Thank you so I much. It's great to have a couple of our sponsors here. Tonight. I know. Compton's Carpet. Yeah. Carpet. yeah. yeah. Cool. It's awesome. Also wanted to thank uh, Reno Treadway, who was yeah, our right. engineer this evening. Jean and Barbara Moore, who are going to get some really pretty pictures of you. And we have another photographer here tonight, Roger DeWater, who comes every now and then and captures beautiful women only. I'll let you know that. <laughs> we're gonna, in fact, we're going to make you do another song or two here in a few minutes so Roger can get some shots. There you go. Uh, he didn't get here for the early stuff, so we'll let Barbara and Jean and Roger shoot a little more on you. Also wanted to thank our listening audience out there who tunes in all the time. Keep on coming back. Randy, thank you for making this what it is. Without you, we couldn't have done it. You are in the music room.